the known is more easy than the unknown. Mm. And it's because it's more easy for me to continue operating in what I know, what I've been doing, rather than going to this next level that like may hurt me, may build yeah. me up, may whatever. I just don't know what comes over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna just stay here. Yeah. And I think that that's really what it is. It's just the fear of the unknown. But the only thing, unfortunate thing is that in business and entrepreneurship in general is that you have to become a different person every step of the way. You can't do the yeah. same thing from a thousand to a hundred thousand to a million to 10. You literally become a different person at every step of the way. Yeah. And there's certain belief systems, character traits, and skill sets that you need as you go. And most people just either they're content with where they are, they're afraid of the unknown, or they're not willing to gain the skill sets, character traits, belief systems that will get them to the next level. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like? To so come for nothing at all But every day you just wanting it all Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear But believing that your blessing is near Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most But still being devoted the most Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about Yeah, Let me show you What's up, y'all? This is Justin Owens, back at the Run The Play Show, where I help break down the top plays of success from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and personalities by sharing gems from their personal playbook. Yeah. And listen, I'm excited today. Today's <laughs> guest, he's a great friend of mine. He's a very successful entrepreneur, e-commerce, and personal brand guru. You've probably seen his videos all over social media. <laughs> but a visionary, he's a co-founder of Support Black Colleges, a global brand. And listen, this guy knows his business, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So welcome to the Run The Play Show. Welcome to the locker room. Justin Phillips. How you feeling, man? I'm good, bro. It's a pleasure being here, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate you coming, man. This Long is... time coming, bro. Yeah, I know, bro. This is, this is gonna be a good conversation. It's, it's the it's the battle of the Justins. Who? Yeah, who's, I know. Fact. The, and then you got lights getting dark. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be tight, man. It's no, gonna be. Sure. I just want to say first of all, man. I've just for me, it's been cool just seeing your journey. Like you know, I didn't get a chance to see every moment of it, but like what I've been able to see since 2018, yeah, has been incredible. Just seeing you come to Atlanta and move in rooms and connect with people and build brands and you know you you've always had a giving spirit like you probably one of the few people that like yo this dude always just share yeah. and don't ask for anything and it's like in my opinion that's one of the best ways to build relationships which is why in my opinion you have so many great relationships with people yeah no, you know, no, just no, all this over, is, so it's definitely a, a full circle moment we were talking a little bit off camera where yeah. it's like I came down here in 2018 and we met through a mutual friend and yeah. my mom introduced us. We sat down in the gathering spot and yeah. we talked a little bit about network marketing. Facts. It's and crazy. <laughs> now it was right at that point where I went off and did my thing, you went off and did your thing and yeah. now we're coming back in the yeah. same you know, yeah. space. And bringing the lessons, man. I think because the lessons, we were just talking about, you know, entrepreneurship sucks until it doesn't. Exactly. And I think it's important for y'all to understand that because it's joint <laughs> hard. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. It ain't the easiest thing in the world. But man, when it's great, it's just like, I tell people network marketing, honestly, I don't think it's a business that's necessarily better. When it's good, it's great, it's fun. Right. When it's bad, it's nothing worse. It's, yeah. it's, it's like, yo, I can't get out of this. But I think the good thing about it, and this business in general, is that it just builds the character. Because like, my thing is this, like, other than this, what will we be doing? Right. So it's just like, what am I going to do Like, when it's bad? Just lay down and quit? Like, yeah, I don't no, really have sure. an option. Like, yeah. This is what we do. You know, yeah. you know it's, it's interesting to me to look at how far, you know, and I don't make this like a racial, this ain't a racial podcast, y'all, but <laughs> listen. You know, a couple of generations ago, my, my like my grandfather when he died, his birth certificate on his his dad it said uh, he was a laborer. That was his oh, wow. his occupation. Yeah. So like sometimes in my head I'm like, yo, we not really that far away from people not even having an opportunity to do anything. That's a fact. Like, you know, and so my grandma was just talking about that. She was like, um, when she or when she was in school, it was segregated. Mm -hmm. So and then. That labor point brought me back to something too. I was thinking about it. So my great grandmother passed away, and when she passed away, they were reading her eulogy, and mm -hmm. it was like she liked to do puzzles, and she was like a security guard and stuff wow. like that. And I was just like, it was very interesting because I was like, out of all of the things that this woman has done, like over her life, maybe lived like 80, 90, wherever. Y'all yeah. are saying like she likes puzzles, and she was a security guard. Now you know black folk, they yeah. like she was a security guard, so she protected the people. Yeah, like, she made sure, like you know, yeah. and I was like, I love that, but. Yeah. It just kind of like led me back to like the things that we do. Yeah. I think that we do them so that when people are reading our eulogy, like they can have much more grand things to say. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know. It just brought me back to that when you said that. Yeah, no, it's special, man. It's special. Uh, well, let me ask you this because a lot of people see your content now mm -hmm. on building e-commerce brands and stuff like that. Yeah. What What is a skill set or a talent that most people wouldn't know that you have? Me? You know what? This is a good one. And 
Shout out to our friend Neo too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, Neo. I think people don't know that I really hoop like that for real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> why you throw Neo in the I hoop? Because <laughs> you know Neo don't got a basketball bone in yeah, his body. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, that's like, my boy. He yeah, definitely no, can hoop. Like, he can but no, nah, I be telling people, I'm like, bro, I swear to you, I, no, you I just really look get, like yeah, this, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, we I, played before. I was we, like, okay, we, we, we get, go. You know, we we do our thing. I think that's just a little skill. Yeah, no, that is that is, and it's and it's most people probably wouldn't know till they get on the court. You know, which is important. It's important to see. Yeah, okay. So let's let's talk about business i know that's why you know people definitely want to hear from you sure. um and you've been able to grow your i mean your social media content i told you the other day has been on another level mm -hmm. and we could talk about that but really what i want to talk about is what's the process of finding your lane in social media okay and blocking out the noise and figuring out what could work for you. Yeah. How did you How did you go through that process? So the first part of it was just trying a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And I was just like, let me just try everything and see what works. Then it was like podcast clips and then just me, you know, doing my little point up thing, just a yeah. bunch of stuff. And then the point up situation started to get a lot of traction. Okay. And then I kind of analyzed why it was doing so. And then I kind of doubled down on it. And I realized that the reason it was working so well is because in this space of e-commerce there's mm -hmm. things that people hide most of the time it's who's your manufacturer yeah. who's this and that who's doing your ads whatever yeah. and i'm like okay i realize that this is important it's like number one it has to be something that is something that no one talks about yeah. that everyone needs that is infinitely available to you so for me i realized that no one talks about their manufacturers because everyone thinks it's a secret yeah. mind you this is all public information wow number two it's everyone, everyone, everyone that needs this in this business. When we talked about, you know, yeah. new age CEOs, hey, who's your manufacturer here? Yeah. Fact. And then number shout three. out to him for by the way. We had a lunch <laughs> conversation that literally helped change the whole new age CEOs brand. Nah. Like, for real. And then third was like, it's infinitely deep. Like it's an infinite bag that I can go in. I can talk about my manufacturers, all of these big brand manufacturers. So it's something that will never tire and never run out of content. And there will always be infinite amount of brands that are always popping up that I can talk about. So once I figured that space out, it just gave me an unlimited type of bag. And I think that it was because no one was talking about and sharing that information, mm -hmm. why it started to explode so fast. Cause it's like, who's this kid that's like, well, bro, like that's Nike's manufacturer. That's crazy. So, yeah. and I think that since I started exposing that and being very consistent with it, that's yeah. what like how I really found the lane and honed in on yeah. it. What's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens, the Run and Play Show, and this episode is being brought to you by BetterHelp. Listen, give online therapy a try at BetterHelp.com forward slash RTP and get on your way to being your best self. I've talked about it and talked about it and talked about it as a leader. Not only do you have to be equipped and be filled, sometimes you got to be able to assist and help other people. But listen, having the tools to be able to navigate through all the things that we go through, whether you're dealing with, you know, situations around or decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. And listen, learning to trust yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I think one of the things I like best about therapy is that it allows you to have skills to be able to handle situations as they arrive, as they come up. And really what happens in a leadership position, which we talk about a lot of times on the show, is like, listen, now you're equipped to not only help yourself, but you can help people. Because I don't believe you can really help other people unless you learn how to help yourself. And so if you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's completely online, which I love, designed to be convenient flexible and suited to your schedule plus it's private you don't have to go into a place and worry about who's seeing you right you, you fill out a brief questionnaire online then you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional cost so let therapy be your map with better help visit betterhelp.com slash rtp today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash rtp y'all go run the play so did what, did one of the videos go viral and you're like okay that's it or did it just have more views than other videos that you normally put out and you're like okay let me keep going on yeah this. it just had more views like one of them had more views and I was like all right if that's what they like um, I'm a big proponent of like the market is always right mm -hmm. so I was like if that's what the people say that they want then I'll just continuously give it to them so I just kind of well, all right that video works let's let's triple down and wow. just see what happens yeah it's simple but a lot of people don't do it yeah yeah what why do you feel like that is because. It, and I'll ask you this because it's like even the style of how you do it is different. So it's kind of like your style. of Why do mm -hmm. you feel like people who it's kind of hard for them to find that that lane? I think it's because it's the same thing with business. Like business is simple, but it's not easy. Yeah. So 
the, what I'm doing is extremely simple to understand. Point up and tell people information. Yeah. But it's not easy to do it every single day for multiple months in a row and go live every day and give out your best information and constantly research. Like That's not easy to do. Yeah. So I think that that's why there's a disconnect there because either some people don't have the information so they always have to like search yeah. for it and then others like don't have the consistency. And I'm just in a unique position by the grace of God where it's like, I had all the information from the business that I'm doing, mm -hmm. and then also I had the consistency. Got it. What's your content schedule like? Because you put out a lot of content. Yeah, for me, I just put out one piece of content, content a day, honestly. But so usually what I'll do is like batch up like two or three pieces on the weekend, Okay. and then I make one a day, to be honest. So it's like probably take me like 30, 45 minutes. And my, my strategy is this, like a lot of people will do five pieces of content, like a quote and a this and a that, and I'm just like, give them one really good piece of content that has a lot of potential to go viral. Kind of like, a, I would say like a Mr. Beast strategy versus yeah. like being very consistent on YouTube once a week. Yeah. It's like, I put out a very good video once a month and then it goes very viral. So I just do like once a day. That's strong. Yeah. Yeah, that's tight. And then, so you like research all that stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, so the I, 30, 40 minutes, is that's included in that? Or? Yeah. But most yeah. of the time, I do, like, a lot of research on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And then it'll take me, like, 30, 40 minutes to just put the video together. Dang. Yeah, because so. I be like, yo, you got the point on it. You got the, the video, yeah. like, the, the uh, what do you call it, like, the screen? The green screen. Record, and yeah. then I was like, dang. Then you got the voiceover with it. I was like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's some work. But now that, I think that it's interesting, too, because it kind of made me a better speaker, too. Yeah. So now it's just like, I'm in my closet, like... Uh, the secret manufacturer behind that. <laughs> and it just, it's just cool to see, though, because it, it made me uh, better as a, a speaker and as, like, an entrepreneur and stuff, too. Yeah. And yeah. you've had, you've still been, like, it's, you've had some surprise followers of, like, how your content's reached people and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, so very crazy. It's, it's amazing how, you know, you just getting in your bag and getting in your gift can attract the people around wow, the world. bro, like, wow. And then... Because at one point, I think we were doing the math on that, like over the past maybe three or four months, I gained like 400,000 followers. And wow. like Chris Jenner followed me, Dapper wow. Dan, Joe Budden, like just random people, bro. And yeah. it's just like very, you're right. Like when you, I guess when you're doing something, and I think it's like exposing the truth too, because yeah. it's like very polarizing and it's just the truth. Yeah. And I think that attracts people. Yeah, no, I love that. And, and now I've even seen you, now you're throwing like your other content in the mix and it's still, it's still right, well, yeah. you know? So I think that's, it's uh, it's great. How did you, at what point did you say, okay, you know, all right, got the content going, but your main business now is teaching people how to grow their personal brands and yeah. start their clothing lines. How did, when did you add that piece in? Yeah, I think it was when I started to have more of an attraction towards helping a lot of people. Cause for me personally, um, clothing was getting to a place to where I was like, all right, this is, we did this. It's almost pretty automated. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I know what it felt like for me to help thousands of people as far as just giving them garments that made them feel more pride and right. joy. So I was like, if I can do that for a Justin, for a Neo, for a whoever, and then yeah. they can go and impact thousands of people. But I just have to talk to five people that want to impact thousands of people, it made it more impactful for me personally. Yeah. So I think that's where I started to make that transition where it was like, I just felt like I can impact a lot more people at one time, but if I had made that transition. Yeah, I love that. If, if we were to talk about a couple tips for somebody who's getting in the e-commerce or yeah. clothing line space right now, what are some, some pitfalls you see a lot of people making, some tips that you, you would say? Um, I would say if you're getting into the clothing space right now, it's very important to deploy self-awareness immediately once you get into the business. Okay. Because the issue that I had was I wanted to build a life around my business rather than a business around my life. And what I ended up okay. doing wrong was I didn't, I was just trying to do what I thought was right for social media. Yeah. So it's like, get a warehouse, hire a hundred people. That looks super cool. And then when I really sat back and thought about it, it's like, I'm not the operations guy. I'm mm -hmm. not the guy that's managing eight sewing machines in the warehouse mm -hmm. and et cetera. And then when I realized that, it was like, wow, I wish I would have made a, a decision based around self-awareness, looking at all the different business models that are available because yeah. there's so many in clothing. Yeah. And then just saying, you know what, maybe creating everything from scratch isn't the way for me, but yeah. maybe doing what I am strong at, which is building the content, building the awareness, and then maybe having a fulfillment center ship everything out, I would have made a better decision. And there was a lot of pain that was attached to 
not making that decision based on self awareness in the beginning. So got it. So if you go back, would you get a warehouse deal? No. Okay. I would. I would assess all of the business models. I would assess myself and yeah. see what my strengths and weaknesses are, and then align myself with the business model that is most aligned with who I am as an entrepreneur now and where I want to go as an entrepreneur in the future. So, and then hopefully that hopefully. The one, the entrepreneur I feel I am now and the one that I align with aligns with the same business model that is aligns with me right now. That's the bar. And, and you said something that I like. You said to take a look at your life and build your business yeah, around Yeah, so it. most people build a, a life around their business mm -hmm. rather than building a business around their life. Hmm. That's so true. Cause, and if you're not careful, you could create a business that feels like a jail. Bro, and you then you're a slave to it. This is the thing, and you resent it. Yeah. So that's what I realized. It was like, why am I so mad about doing entrepreneurship and like what I wanted to do? And I was like, oh, it's because I'm going against the grain and doing it the way that I shouldn't have been doing it in the first place anyway. So then yeah. I always tell people that's why you start with self-awareness, because if you don't, then you're going to resent the business you built, which is your baby. You don't want to resent your baby. Yeah. So pick the right business model the first time and then go from there. So when you say like self-awareness, it's like, OK, when it comes to business, what am I good at? What do mm -hmm. I like? to do yeah like it's so in theory it would be outstanding if all of these things lined up yeah the thing that you love to do is the thing that makes the most money and is the right business model for you to be in so it's like i let's just say i love fitness yeah i love fitness i love teaching people online yep. and because online teaching and group coaching probably would be the most lucrative mm -hmm. so i love fitness I love teaching people online. And then at scale, this online business would just be one person right now versus 10,000 people in the future. So I don't have yeah. to like go and create something totally different. Yeah. That would be ideal, okay. but it didn't happen like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. But I like it though. That's that's a good way to start though. Yeah. Because you know, I always tell people anytime you start a business, there are gonna be phases that you don't parts of it that you don't like of any business. It's right. Just, it's just the way it is. Not for sure. But you do got to find something that you could deal with and be willing to go through yeah. a process of, of learning because, you know, like I said, it's suck until it don't, guys. And know, I think so. that I think that's why, um, like, even purpose in business mm -hmm. is so big because it's like, dang, this sucks really bad, but I know what I'm doing mm -hmm. is going to be beneficial to a lot of people. So you yeah. kind of just hold on to that while you're trying to, like, figure the rest of the things out. But yeah. for me, I just spent so much money, like, so much in consultants and so much in a bunch of other stuff yeah. trying to figure out with the decision I could have made when I first got started. Wow. Yeah. Dang. That's the bar. Sometimes you got to spend a lot of money to figure it out too, though. That's fair. <laughs> You're like, you know what? <laughs> Bump all this. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I would just go do my thing. And right. I, it, there's a part I think everybody gets to uh, with that. You, we were talking about network marketing earlier because yeah. we met through a presentation. Like, right. You know, I, it just met your mom and I was like, that's crazy that this all came together. All right. But um, you did network marketing at one point, mm -hmm. right? So let's talk about that because there's some people that's like, oh, it's a scam type <laughs> of a business. Um, what what is before I even give? I don't want to be biased. Right, right, right. Not, what are your thoughts on <laughs> network marketing? So, well, first of all, I should start with network marketing. I started in college. Okay. And when I started in college, that's how I was paying my rent. And the way I looked at it was, I'm decently popular online. Mm -hmm. Maybe I can show this good business opportunity to other people, and then I can make some money, and then also impact some people too. Yeah. So that's how I looked at it when I first started. But my idea of network marketing now that I don't do it anymore, and I have done it, is I think that almost every person should at least give it a shot, especially if you're like new in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Because one thing that I do love about network marketing versus besides all of the stigmas that I don't believe to be true anyways, mm -hmm. um, is that when you get into these seminars, these conferences, and you're around like-minded individuals and good energy, mm -hmm. that's a strong help when you're yeah. just now getting started in business. And then number two is that uh, just like this personal development that comes with self uh, in, in network marketing, because like that self-development was something that ironed me out to be the right person when the opportunity of what I'm doing now came. So it was like yeah. the books that I read, the people that I met, the YouTube videos I watched to train my mind, allowed me to be successful in the opportunity I'm in now. But that came from me starting in network marketing. Wow. Yeah. 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 I think like I, I say it a lot, but network marketing or door door sales, you gotta just try one of them. Because yeah. it's just it's going one, it builds you, you go you're gonna develop a tough skin, which you're gonna need for entrepreneurship. Right. D it develops the disciplines, but it does it at a fraction of the cost that real business will cost you. For sure. You know, because if you get out there in another business and you like you don't take it serious, well now you got a warehouse that yeah. now you got to pay for. You got yeah. employees and now you got to pay for. You got 
You know, it's just there's some things that can be way more expensive right. than the little hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, whatever it is, yeah. a month that you're gonna end up paying for no exactly. marketing. Exactly. And I'm and guys, I'm not just saying this because that's my boy and I'm vouching for network marketing, bro. This is really truly honestly what I believe, bro. Yeah. Like for real. And yeah. I learned I even learned like about branding, how to become a better speaker, yeah. marketing, because it's like you just because in network marketing I think was unique is because everybody's selling the same product in your company mm. how do i differentiate myself yeah. from everybody that's doing the same thing that's really good. that's a whole nother world yeah. you know what i'm saying imagine like if all of our mutual friends was we were all selling yeah. the same thing and in some ways some are selling right. the same thing as education but how do i separate myself in that space yeah and, and it puts you in a little box you're like all right i gotta figure this out i never told you this too but one of the one bar that you said that really uh, stuck with me that i even share with people to this day and you know how it is like you give the credit you yeah. know one mm -hmm. i'm giving the credit now and then this is my first and last time <laughs> giving the credit and then from there it's, it's all on me <laughs> it's up until justin said it i believe the last day about <laughs> but no you were saying um you basically said if someone is in entrepreneurship and they're thinking about quitting, it's because they haven't invested enough in yeah. general. And yeah. I was like, so that, that was really good for me because like now when I talk to new entrepreneurs, I'm like, you're thinking about quitting is because you haven't even invested enough time, enough money. Because I knew that when I wanted to quit certain things in entrepreneurship, I was like, I got too much on the line. Yeah, I just cannot quit. I went too far. You're like, there's no way I can just not, leave with nothing. I have nothing. to figure it out. It's so. like, then where do I go? Yeah. Do I go get a job in public? Like, right. it's like the thought process. Like, no. Bro. Let me let me figure this. So out. that was the yeah. that was one that really impacted me, bro. Thank you, bro. I yeah. appreciate that, man. That's big. That's I love it. Um, building all these different brands because. Mm -hmm. The ones I've seen have all been a little bit different. Right. What is your process like? Okay, you say, okay, you know, I'm about to create a brand. Mm -hmm. Where does Justin start? Where do I start when I'm thinking about a brand? Um, for me now, I'm thinking about the three things. Impact, income, influence. Okay. And just if you're talking about, like, the brand building side, I'm like, all right. Which, what, what has the most leverage? Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, because my ideal situation is this. I'm like, can the thing that has the most leverage impact the most people and make me the most money? Damn. Like, so that's that's my goal. But if you're talking about like the strategic things that you have to do when building a brand, it's like, I'm like, all right, let's figure out the name. Let's figure yeah. out the domain. Let's get the mission statement and let's figure out the business model. And then from there, it's just like pouring on all of the other stuff that comes with it, like the social media marketing and whatnot. So yeah. I think that once you have that social media side to where you can literally just, cause it's a skill that I just pour onto anything that I want yeah. to now. So, um, but those are like the small key components. Okay. W what would you say are like some of the biggest threats to the e-commerce space right now? And then maybe some of the biggest opportunities you see? So I would say the biggest threats in it is well this is like self-proclaimed threats mm -hmm. like people think that it's very saturated yeah and i'm just like bro you don't say that when you go to like the supermarket and go to the water aisle where it's like spring water alkaline yeah. water ozarka it's like bro there's something for everybody yeah that's so fact. that's one thing like that. um same thing with bread mm -hmm. whole white rye yeah. you know raisins yeah. something for everybody um but i think that the opportunity there is so big bro because even if you think about it right now I think I saw some articles like by 2040, 95% of transactions, like retail transactions, are going to be conducted online. And then even now, the e-commerce industry is like 10.3 trillion dollars. And that's not that's not like, oh, I'm pitching on Shark Tank and the market share is so yeah, big. Yeah. Like it's like it's just real. There's yeah. so many people buying stuff online. And then also, I always tell people this too is like, you know how we talk about like recession-proof businesses mm -hmm. and whatnot. You tell the day that people are walking around with no T-shirts on, you call me because I'm yeah. gonna be very worried. Wow. So it's it's one of those types of things where I think there's just so much opportunity in the market share as well as the you know, like recession proofness of the business too. Got it. You have a unique business, right? Where you like teach people about brands mm -hmm. and ideas, right? Have you ever had a time when somebody's like, okay, listen, I want to put this on a shirt. And you're yeah. like, yeah, that's, that's not it. All the time. I, okay. How, do you say that's not it or how do you, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know me, bro. I just, yeah. I just be honest because I just, I, I'm very nice with how I speak though. Yeah. It's like, hey, from my past experience of over 12 years in the business, I don't necessarily think that that design is going to portray what you would like it to in the marketplace that you're attacking. I'd much rather you kind of do it, maybe something like this, and I send a few examples. And like, does this give you any inspiration? And then we kind of get somewhere. And then sometimes it's Got like, it. bro, that's just not good. Like, let's just workshop it together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that, and that's the process I think for somebody starting. 
Because what I learned about the clothing line business, I thought it was like, okay, I put something fly on the shirt. <laughs> you know, like, get a rapper, athlete, entrepreneur. Like, because that started from people asking me. I was like, you know what? Really, it's funny how that even came about because I got tired of people asking me. Right. I just put it on the shirt so they would stop asking me. Right. But when people are like, yo, I, I want to have a clothing line and sell shirts, I'm like, yeah, but it, it don't make that kind of money just off of a t shirt. You've got to have so much more to it. Yeah. Like, what what's the. What are some of the sides of that space that people do need the mentoring and coaching for that they just don't even know that they don't know? You know what? It's it's something that I call the eye, like okay. developing the eye. Because the thing is that not a lot of people have an eye for quality and an eye for good design. Mm -hmm. So you know the effects of good design in your life because mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to operate without an iPhone or a shoe or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But you, you, when you're making and creating product and design in general, you you don't necessarily just be like oh this is how you design a silhouette of a t-shirt to make it fit the right way like it doesn't typically happen like that in yeah. your head so i think the hardest thing for people to develop in general is just the eye for good quality mm -hmm. and the eye for a good product in general because you know what it feels like but you don't necessarily you know what an iphone is you don't yeah. create it mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? that's different yeah, yeah it's totally different conversation got it yeah because i know i made some mistakes i get some shorts and i'm like yo why would they make the pants like this? And right. you gotta start the whole process over. And one of the mistakes I made at the beginning, I would order stuff just off the look, and then I get a whole thing, and I'm like, yo, that whole thing is, yeah. is it's a waste of money. Right. <laughs> so uh, how does a person avoid that? Like, Right. So the good thing about that is that luckily we're operating in this age where there's so many ways to like make mock-ups, okay. to make 3D yeah. mock-ups, mm -hmm. to use AI to make different creations that don't exist. Dang. And so now, even if I'm getting started brand new, I'm not ordering any inventory. Yeah. I'm coming up with a brand, a concept or an idea that can benefit a specific group of people. And then I'm making a bunch of designs that I think are cool, maybe three to five. And then I'm putting them out using some sort of like marketing tactics. Like right now, probably TikTok organic, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit of TikTok ads if I have a yeah. budget. And then I'm just seeing what the market tells me. And then pouring more fire on what the market tells me is good. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That's that's great advice. See, this is some stuff y'all just got to learn early. <laughs> Which is why, you know, I always, and I I hate when, you know, people, like, mentorship is a pitch. Mm. I don't like when mentorship is a pitch. I see. But I do believe that it's important for you to get it, especially yeah. if you find the right person. But another thing I think is really important is when you find a good mentor, you've got to be a great mentee. Yeah. Like, one, one of the books I got, come, actually, my next book is called Menteeship, because most people want mentorship, uh -huh. but nobody's taught people how to be a good mentee. That's very cool. And so I'm a, that, that whole thing is about that. But I think you got to have both. It's like, okay, i got to be willing to invest into the mentor, pay the mentor, serve the mentor, however I get in there to get the information. But then I've got to be the mentee that's willing and enough to take their advice. Yeah. Because you've seen people, probably you gave them advice, and they're like, bump it. Yeah, I'm gonna still do my own thing. Thousand percent, and I say it all the time. It's just like, look, I'm just here because you wanted to be in this situation, mm -hmm. so I'm giving you my best advice based on the knowledge that I have. Whether you take yeah. it or not has nothing to do with me, but I want you to be successful, so I'm giving you the right answer. And to be honest, you paid me to give you this right answer, right. so do what you wish with that information. Yeah. <laughs> like, but now nah, you're you're really right about that, bro. I think mentorship is too is so important, and yeah. that's what I always tell people too. Like when they're getting started even in clothing or entrepreneurship in general, is that you don't, you have to learn from mistakes. They don't have to be your own. Mm -hmm. And you'd be very foolish to learn from only your own mistakes. Yeah. So for me, I like to pay down ignorance with mm -hmm. getting mentors. Yeah. And I, we were talking about it earlier. It's like, I, the way, the reason I got to where I am now is because I had mentors. Mm -hmm. And I started off, so let's, let's give, we should do this. We should give a quick masterclass on how to pick the right mentor. That is a fact. So for me personally, the way that I do it is I vet out multiple people yep. that are doing exactly what I want to do yep. and are coming back with the knowledge and is in a packaged format that will give me a desired transformation from step A to step Z. Mm -hmm. And they have to have receipts to prove that they've been able to do that. Right. Yep. Once they have that, I ask myself three questions. Do I think it would be fun to work with this person? Mm -hmm. Number two, do I think working this, with this person will get me closer to my goal or further from my goal? And number three, do I have the money to pay for this? And do I have the time available to allocate towards the amount of time that they're saying it's going to take me to do so? The answer to those questions are yes, and they're vetted. Then I don't even think about it. I just do it. There we so, go. And starting from, that started from 
take, and this is the process. You go free information, mm -hmm. apply the free information. Yep. If you make some money from the free, then more than likely you'll be able to make some money mm -hmm. from the pay. So I made a bunch of money, or not, a, I wouldn't say a bunch, but just relative. I made some money from watching people on YouTube. Yep. The one that I implemented his strategy and it started to make me money, paid him $100 for a coaching call, made a couple thousand from that, a thousand dollar course, another thousand dollar course. Then mm -hmm. that's been going up to five, 75, 25K, et cetera. But this is also something I think we should talk about too, is like, we gotta, we gotta stop thinking, or in my opinion, I think that we should stop blaming all of our success or all of our failures on just one mentor. Yeah, I agree. So it's like, there's so many skill sets that you have to have in clothing in general too. How to make a tech pack, how to design, yeah. the creative, the website, the copywriting, all of this. So you might get some of these skills for free on YouTube and then you might pay for some of these skills, but they didn't complete the total package that you needed to be successful. Right. So then what most people do is what I did is like, I pay for one skill and it doesn't make me a million bucks. I'm like scam. Yeah. And then, but you know, the acronym, you still confused about money, yeah, right? right? Yeah. And then I get all of these other skills and then there's one person that has that last skill that I need and I pay them. And I'm like, oh my God, he's a genius. Right. Because I just made so much money. But in reality, I just gathered all the skills that I needed. Yeah. So that's yeah, just a few thoughts. Yeah, no, I feel like I feel like learning is it's like uh it's, it's it's what do you call it? Like what's that little lock that you had in school? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like the, the little, when you twist. Yeah, yeah twist, yeah, yeah. you go back the other way. It's like that's to me that's that's been courses and events and mentors because it's just like you just never know which turn is gonna be the one that right. like, unlocks it for yeah. you. And it's like all of them have been important. And that's why even for mentors I talk to them about is because for the most part, if you have been a solid mentor to a mentee, uh, then they'll always recognize you and give you credit. Right. Jim Rohn said one of the worst things that can happen to a mentor is to be removed from the mentee's testimonial. Mm. And that has to do with the relationship right. and how you treat people and how you communicate with them and how you honor them. And so as mentors, we have a role too. It's not just, hey, you do this right. It's like, okay, let me make sure I'm doing the right thing, providing the best that I can. You know, like I'm quick to refund people quick. Like, yeah. oh, you know, bump it. Don't right. worry about it. You know, because worst case scenario, maybe you learn some stuff, maybe you didn't, but you ain't gonna say yeah. Justin still got that this. He got, you know, right what I'm saying, like, you just gotta do right by people, mm -hmm. and you know, that, that's that's just good business. Right. But it keeps sound relationships yeah. in place as well, too. I agree one thousand percent. But moral of the story is that you gotta have mentors, whether it's paid, free, books, direct or indirect, whatever it is. Yeah. That it's just not up for negotiation. Yeah. Who, who's been your greatest inspirations throughout your journey um i would first thing is telling me is probably my mom there we um, go. shout out to mom and then mom's in the other room so yeah. and i'm not saying that because she's in the other room <laughs> probably, yeah. well maybe a little bit yeah. like, uh, we walk out she's of here she's like, now. you can't ride with me home no more <laughs> <laughs> but no nah, but i would say first is my, first is my mom and the reason i say that is because my mom had me at a very young age i think like 17 somewhere around there yeah. and she would go from friend's couch to friend's couch with like holding me and sleeping with me because my grandmother, she wasn't having that. Like, she yeah. like you, you're not gonna have a kid in this house, whatever, et cetera. So then I just grew up with my mom and watched her go from sleeping on friend's couches to getting a job, then to getting a corporate job, then doing real estate on the side, as well as bottle service, yeah. then getting fired from the cor corporate job because you're doing real estate at the job, then mm -hmm. going all in on this and then saying, well, I got, you know, bottle service to doing thousands of dollars a night but I still have this passion to do real estate and then quitting that that was generating all of the income and going all in on real estate because that's what she believed in so I think just watching that over a long period of time was like very motivating very that's inspiring, uh, inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that man you know there's so many examples you know as parents you know like I've got a daughter and I try to be aware of this because a lot of things your kids learn from you aren't necessarily what you say. Right. You know, it's like it's what they watch you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, especially in entrepreneurship, like I saw like my parents had a cleaning business. And I would, bro, I was in third grade falling asleep in class. And it was like, why are you sleeping? I was like, because I was working last night. Right. Teacher, like, why are you working last night? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, we had to clean these buildings. That's just like my parents did. But I learned so much from my parents, like how to work hard, how to keep your family involved in this stuff. Um, that's why I bring my daughter to most of the events I'm at. Right. Because like, it's the exposure to this that, my job is not to like make you an entrepreneur, yeah. but it's to expose you to an environment that maybe you decide, hey, this is the route for you. Right. You know. And what I like about it is you saw your mom's journey, and it wasn't like, yo, that was too hard. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, oh, you know what? This joint might. Pay. I think I could probably do this. Yeah. You know? I think I think because we we're just fighting for the freedom. You yeah. Know? So it's just like being able to see her go from 
having to have me in daycare at school to yeah. being able to like do whatever she wanted mm -hmm. is like you know that's what I'm fighting for. It's just yeah. having the freedom to do yeah. it. You know, yeah. you know we see it in entrepreneurship. You you like basketball, so we'll talk about it. You got, you know, a lot of people sometimes. Like we look at John Morant lately, it's like, right. bro, you made it. Yeah. Why, why are we still doing some of the right, stuff? That we used right. to do? But then you guess what? I see it with people in entrepreneurship all the time too, where it's like, yo, okay, you you don't gotta be like that no more. Like mm -hmm. you you can change, you can develop. What what why do you feel like it's hard for sometimes people to separate? I know exactly what it is, bro. What? And it's because the known is more easy than the unknown. Mm. And it's because it's more easy for me to continue operating in what I know, what I've been doing, rather than going to this next level that like may hurt me, may build yeah. me up, may whatever. I just don't know what comes over there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just stay here. Yeah. And I think that that's really what it is. It's just the fear of the unknown. But the only thing, unfortunate thing is that in business and entrepreneurship in general is that you have to become a different person every step of the way you can't do the yeah. same thing from a thousand to a hundred thousand to a million to ten you literally become a different person at every step of the way yeah. and there's certain belief systems character traits and skill sets that you need as you go and most people just either they're content with where they are they're afraid of the unknown or they're not willing to gain the skill sets character traits belief systems that will get them to the next level all right let's talk about uh lessons in business mm. i think that's that's important because I always like, like I said, I always try to pass on the stuff I've learned, and obviously you've had your own set of experiences, um, good or bad, like uh, things that you've learned, lessons that you learned that you're like, okay, you know, I do this in every business going yeah. forward. I would say that, well, there's a few. Okay. Because now they, they all hit me at the same yeah. time. You asked that. Um, number one, I would say if you're going into a business and you're going in with a business partner, mm. I would say, number one, make sure that your vision for the company aligns, okay. your day-to-day -day lifestyle aligns, mm -hmm. and then also the morals, values, and ethics that you have as you're conducting business also align too. And then also get in business with somebody that not because they are friends, but because you have two different skill sets that supplement each other. So I think that other people do it differently. And, yeah. you know, most people are just, you just start with who's there. Right. Fam right. Family, your cousin here, friend there, whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's that. And then another thing that's just kind of like coming to me in general is I think people get into entrepreneurship for reasons like money. Yeah. And one of the biggest lessons I learned was just how not important money is mm -hmm. when you're conducting business in general. Now, obviously that's in context, but one thing that I realized is like, bro, it was bad, bro. I don't even think I told you this. So at one point we had um, 30 employees, mm -hmm. 32 employees, and payroll was like 16,000 every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And at one point, uh, I remember payroll was about to be 12,600. And we had $12,000 in the bank. And I'm just like, how are we even gonna make payroll? So then I took six, uh, $600 out of my own pocket, put up payroll and then paid payroll and then immediately had to like call a meeting with all 30 employees in mm -hmm. the back. And I was like, hey, meet me in the back of the warehouse, everybody, met everybody in the back and I'm like, look, we don't have any more money. So if you want to stay here and work, you won't be paid. And also if you stay here, it's because you believe in us and you believe in the vision of the company and you believe that we're gonna find a way to figure this out because I can guarantee you we will. Mm -hmm. And then the next week, it was like three people out of 30 that stayed. And mind you, a lot of them are like family. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So family say so. Rightfully so because if you're not getting paid, I'm not expecting you to stick around. But then I went home and I took a shower that day and I was just like sitting down in the shower because I was just so like weak. You know, I yeah. just felt like, dang bro, how am I about to tell my mom, my Instagram, like all of these people. And then I asked myself, I was like, well, what do you have? Even if you feel like the thing that you've been placing your identity on so much, you don't have it anymore. What did you gain from what you did? And I realized that I gained, you know, character traits. I gained relationships. And I just gained so much from the process of becoming a better businessman and being in entrepreneurship that I realized that the money that we, I got into it for meant nothing. And all that really mattered was who I became as I did business. Because what I realized was, man, if Elon Musk just Tesla dies right now, you put that exact same person in a different opportunity, it goes the same way, more right. than likely because of the skill sets, the character, right. and what he's gained over that time period. So for me, I just was like, for any entrepreneur that's listening now too, is like, don't place your identity in the business. Do the business, be successful, have fun with it, but don't be like, 
if the business isn't, isn't successful, then I'm a bad person because that's yeah. just not true. Mm -hmm. So as you do the business, you just gain better clarity on the type of person you are. And really the issue is this, is like, if the business doesn't fail, it's not because you failed, it's because you don't have the character traits of someone that can manage a business properly. But that's something that can't be learned. Yeah, that so is true. it's it's motivating, but also, you know, unfortunate at times, but it also should motivate as well. Yeah, yeah. So that was like really one of the biggest lessons, like most painful, but like strongest lessons I learned in business. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I was, I, was, um, I was talking to David Shans about this too. I was like, bro, somebody needs to make a game for like entrepreneurship. But like a, a game where it's like the, the, the actual decisions we have to make. Because mm. there's sometimes where it's like, okay, do I pay payroll <laughs> or do I pay my rent? Right. And it's like, which one do you decide? Right. And it's like, and I, and I don't know how we gamify that, but yeah. it's, it's, it's like Monopoly is like a game where you like, it's fake money, right, fake decisions, right. you know? Like, do I buy it? Do I rent it? Do I mm -hmm. try to, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like yeah, bid on it or something right, like yeah, that, you know. Yeah. But I feel like entrepreneurship, you have these like little decisions that you have to constantly make mm -hmm. that nobody knows from the outside world. It's yeah. like, but inside you're like, yo, this is really crazy. Yeah. I gotta make this decision. You what know, what am I gonna do? Yeah. Like, I, this person's been with me for since we started, but we can't afford to pay him. Do I let right. them go or right. do I scrape it together and oh, whatever? Or do I have a conversation? Yeah. Like, and I think that's something that, that that was smart that you did. At least you were willing to have that conversation because you give people. They, the honor of choosing. Right. That's my thing. My thing is this. Most people will avoid those conversations. One thing I realized over time entrepreneurship is that those conversations make you a better person. Yeah. So usually, typically, I would run away from it too. I don't necessarily want to be confrontational. I necessarily yeah. don't want to have that difficult conversation. But yeah. after every single conversation I have like that, I either become a better entrepreneur or a better person in general. So now I'm just like, if there's a tough conversation to be had, let's have it now because I know that I'll become better on the other side of it. Hmm. That's a bar. Yeah. I like that. Um, in, in the e-commerce space, mm -hmm. how do you stay up to date with like what's trending? Cause <laughs> like, you know, like part of the stuff, like, I remember one time he was telling me, he was like, hey, you know, maybe because of your style, maybe find some Jordans that's coming out next year. And right. match. Like how, what's your process of staying up to, not even just current, but like, yeah. So it's funny because I kind of look at it like sports. Okay. So the way I think about it is I'm just studying the game film. Okay. So, you know, every day I might have an hour where I'm studying Twitter, an hour where I'm studying YouTube the next day. So every day I just study a different topic or like a different area of the business or a different social media channel just to stay up to date. Because if I'm LeBron and I'm going to play whomever it is, I'm about to watch every single move that they have to make yeah. sure that I'm more equipped when I go and play them. So that's pretty much what I do during the week. So when you say you study Twitter, give me like, what does that mean? Perfect example. So. Um, we did, we were in, we were in Urban Outfitters mm -hmm. and the way that that happened was because I was studying Twitter one day and I saw Urban Outfitters was getting backlash because they made a HBCU garment, but were charging like 80 bucks for it, but it was a very simplistic design. So when I saw that, I said, we need to make a post that says, what if Support Black College did something with Urban Outfitters, what would that look like? And then we made that post, and then that post got to a buyer at Urban Outfitters, they emailed us and then said they want us in the store. Wow. So that's what that process looks like. It's like studying what's going on in your field, in your niche, in your industry, and then extracting from it the current events and topics that are happening and making them work for yourself so that you can get those types of opportunities. Right. And putting it out timely, because like, I guess exactly. you have to see that and say, hey, yo, let's make a post about this. Let's get it up now. It ain't necessarily have to be the prettiest post <laughs> right. you know, all the time, but yeah, that's, that's that's smart. Okay, so that's how we study Twitter. In your space, how do you study YouTube? YouTube, YouTube for me is more so finding like just new tricks of the trade that are happening. So you know, we build our our business on Shopify. Yeah. So it's like, what apps are working? What you know? What's how do we yeah. boost our conversion rate? And I'm just studying every person from top to bottom. And I call it just like a eat the meat, throw the bones away. So I just take what works for me and then I just throw away everything else. Got it. So okay. I'm just constantly, it's just constantly testing. Yeah. 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 How, how do you effectively scale an e-commerce brand? So it's like, all right, some people just like, hey man, I'm selling shirts out of my trunk. Right. And I'm not gonna lie, I never did that. I right. just, and I think it kind of goes to what you talked about earlier, is like, at least part of it is like designing how I wanted my life to be. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm not knocking it. Right. But I just like, I'm not gonna have the shirts in my trunk. Like right. you can order them online. Right. Like, them, you know? <laughs> but like, how do you go from all right, I got a shirt or clothing design. And mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, now we want to have more designs. Mm -hmm. We want to have more of, uh, what do you call it? Like 
more in inventory. Right. Like how how do I how do I know I'm not scaling too far to where it's like, okay, yeah. all this money I just made, I just sucked it back up into this and now right. I'm in this a, a worse situation. Yeah. So <laughs> um the way that I do it is like I just look at uh historical evidence. Mm -hmm. So even when I am, let's just say I wanted to release a t-shirt today, okay. I'm not going to go based off of my thoughts of like, oh my God, this t-shirt is so good. I'm going to look at what did this last t-shirt do in comparison to this. So let's just say it's a pair of shorts. I'm not going to use t-shirt data on a pair of shorts. I'm going to look at the okay. shorts that I dropped in the past. What can I know that I can do based on what I did in the past? And I'm not going to exceed too far out. I'm going to go like, if I do buy any extra inventory, it's only to cover maybe two months of excess on top of what what I did conservatively here. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're just starting out, for me personally, I try my best to save every dollar that I can in the beginning because I believe that every penny should work like a dollar when you're first getting started out. Yeah. So if I'm just getting started, I'm not jumping into how much money can I spend in ads because I want to scale it and blow it up crazy. Mm -hmm. I want to, how can I first master organic content because it's free to do. Right. All right, I've mastered that and I have a very specific definition of master. Mastering means that it is being done and automated and growing without your, your presence in it at all. So I'm yeah. doing organic content and now that content has been automated, delegated, and is growing without me to the point to where if I try to go put my hand back in it, they're like, Justin, I mean, like, I think we straight for real. Yeah, yeah. So then and only then do I go to, all right, well, now what do I use to scale this up? Well, let's look at our best performing organic creative yeah. and then put some money behind that. So I take it in steps like that, where if you do organic right for a long period of time, you're not spending any money in ads. So now you have a nest egg of capital that you can use to deploy at these other things that you're doing. Yeah. Whereas most people are just like, how do I blow it up as fast as possible? Let's put a thousand, ten thousand dollars into ads. That's all we have. Mm -hmm. Oh, it didn't work out. Now we're out of business. Got it. How do you know? You know, pivoting has become like a, a funny, like a like a, a highly used word with entrepreneurs now, right? Sure. How did you know from maybe it's, you know, support black colleges or what you're doing now, when there was a time to pivot inside of the business mm -hmm. and then when it was time for you to pivot outside of the business? Okay. Um, for me personally, how do I think about that? Because there's a few different ways I could take this. One is I think about like, so for, for example, if I let's just say I'm starting a new brand and it's not working for like, I'd say like maybe three to five years, mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, it's time to just <laughs> yeah. it's time to try something new. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I look at my life in like chunks and stages like that, where it's like, all right, I'm doing this for three to five years. And if it's not continuously growing, then I will possibly pivot. But the way that I categorize the pivoting is it has to be because that is truly not what I want to do anymore. Because I think that most people pivot and they're like, this business isn't working how I wanted it to work. I'm doing something else. For me, it's more so I look at it, and if that is the truth, then I'm like, I just need to be better. So yeah. I'm not pivoting out because I'm not good. I'm pivoting out because I'm the best and I want to do something else. Yeah. Or I'm good on that. I want to do a different opportunity. Yeah. So I don't know. That's that's the first thing that came to yeah. mind. No, that's a good way to do it. I like it. Because you do have those decisions that are like, all right, they're... Um, like Jim Rohn has this thing. I, I just like Jim Rohn. Yeah. He talk about a lot of good stuff. But he said, he said, uh, you know, so as an entrepreneur, you have to learn how to stay, right? And he says, uh, most people they they don't stay long enough. It's like the people that leave halfway through a game. Yeah. But then he says, sometimes you can stay too long, you know. And um, I, I was just reading this influencer's post a couple weeks ago. She just she almost has a million followers on YouTube, and making a little bit like right at seven figures a month and then she just kind of just shut everything down and everybody's oh, wow. asking why and she was like she just had to get back and find herself she was mm -hmm. like she sold her porsche bought her, like a tesla <laughs> closed down stuff and she said she'll probably be back but she was like she, quitting what, did, what was the bar she said quitting when you quit a lot of times it'll feel like you're quitting too soon mm -hmm. but it's probably right on time yeah. and like sometimes you don't realize like, okay you know what i do need to stick through this time right and then sometimes like dang I probably should have really stopped back yeah, then, and I knew it then. And right. so I, I think it's just—I think that's just a kind of like you said, an eye test, something that you kind of figure out in business. Like, yeah, all right, yeah. you know what? This ain't it. Let me just do something else. Right. Uh, but a lot of times you can do that inside of the same business. And the thing is that I think that most of the time we know, but we just choose to overlook the red flags that yeah. are there. Yeah. So, Almost like relationships sometimes. Literally, you'd be like, "Man, this ain't it, bro." Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think over time, but it's the thing like. 
same thing with relationships it's a muscle that you develop over time yeah so you might not know that in your first business but mm-hmm. on your fifth business you're like no nah, yeah just no you yeah. know especially because you've seen stuff before and i think that's why it's like there is a part of you gathering your own experiences right. where it's like i i haven't seen every person in the world but i've seen characteristics of people and i'm like okay i don't know you <laughs> But the things you show me, I've seen somebody just like you, and I know how that ended up. So I'm just going for my sake. Right. I've seen this all the way play out, and I'm not going to play it out. Right. Yeah. You know. But you know, one of my mentors, Brad, he said, uh, you know, in the midst of all of that, you still treat everybody the right way, because 99 out of 100 times it won't work in your favor. Yeah. But he said the one time that it does work out, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. And so that's that's the mentality I try to I try to bring with people. No, so, I love that. Yeah. Um, Technology, AI, in the e-commerce space. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, it's going to destroy everything. <laughs> you know, people always go extreme. Uh, right. uh, what are your thoughts on AI, e-commerce, yeah. everything? I mean, I think that I think that no matter what, it still needs inputs. So yeah. you're going to still need people to put in these inputs. Yeah, uh, it's just interesting how at first I thought it was going to like mess up the like creative stuff or mm-hmm. the opposite it was going to be like the day-to-day stuff that was going to be messed up but it's kind of like a lot of the creative stuff actually mm-hmm. like the editing and the logo design and all of this yeah. stuff so um for me personally i mean it's not all the way there i think it still probably has like three to five years to yeah. develop but that i my thing is this is like it's a call to those that want to be great yeah I agree. so it's like look Things are happening. Are you gonna innovate yourself and become yeah. more valuable? Or are you not? Yeah. And yeah, Nikki, uh, shout out to her. She uh, made a post the other day. She said, "AI is not going to take your job, or AI is not going to replace you at your job. A person that's skilled at using AI is going to." Exactly. And I feel like it. Def- like it's probably one of the tools I've used the most. And I'm like, yo, this just saved so much time right. off of what I used to do. Yeah. So if you're like a person that studies, it literally, you know, you use like you could get the meat and throw away the bones mm. it literally lets you just get to the meat of certain topics literally and you're like oh no this is all right let me and let me dive deeper in this so now right. the hour that i do spend studying i spend it studying more stuff that i want versus just exactly. scrolling and trying to find because half of the time of stu- like studying is like i'm looking for right what i want what i'm looking for yeah, you know what i'm saying so, but you know like you said catching up time because i think right now chat only goes to 2021 all right so it's, it's got a little bit to catch up yeah. but Man, it's just there's a. I, I feel like for me, it's almost like when Google came out. I was like, all right, this is a little different. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. crypto was a great thing, and there's, I think blockchain is still going to grow right. and still be great. For sure, but this is definitely a disruptor that almost evens the playing field for somebody that's just yeah. really trying to just implement. And the good thing too is like it's a great opportunity because all of these new things that are disruptors, it's very great opportunity for people to make a lot of money yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. So it's just like. If I'm new in the space, I'm excited because yeah. it's just like, what can I attach myself to mm-hmm. or what can I create that can be the next big thing? Yeah. And I'm going to just say something to y'all real quick. Uh, <laughs> history don't care if y'all don't catch on. You understand? Like, we're not sad that Blockbuster Video went out of business. Why? Because what replaced it was more convenient. And so, like, the record store and the, the CDs that you buy the store, like, Walmart still have them, but, like, we're not mad that the record store went out of business. Why? Because now if I want a song, I can just click it on my phone and download it. So anything that it's changing in my opinion what i started learning how to do is just investigate and study i made the mistake with tiktok and i realized Uh, that's how you get that's how you get old real quick because i was like all right when i was on facebook heavy my facebook was actually growing really fast but instagram came out i was like you know what maybe i'm gonna jump over here so i started jumping on instagram but what happened is i got so comfortable in instagram that when tiktok came out i was like ah i'm good (laughs) which i turned into the older people that was just good at facebook you see what i'm saying (laughs) but i had gone from Black Planet to MySpace. <laughs> you know, this whole time I'm jumping around from social media to find something that works. And I was like, uh, a few people was like, yo, you should get on TikTok. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to be dancing. But I kept thinking like that because I never got into to it, it right. and looked at it for myself, exactly. which is what I suggest for most people. It's like, don't be listening to posts on social media about it. Don't listen to what your friends are saying about it. Why don't you open it up yourself and figure out some stuff? Bro, what you said, the inputs? Yeah. The first week, my inputs were trash, and I was like, oh, this joint sucks. Right. When I started learning how to get better at what I was putting in, I said, oh, this is scary. This is the thing, too. Very, very valuable lesson I learned in this space as well is that when these opportunities do show themselves, you have to milk them for everything that they have mm. because they won't be there forever. 
And I learned this because I actually got started in entrepreneurship when I was working for Tyler Perry, actually. So we were doing all of oh. Tyler Perry's social media management for Tyler Perry Studios. Wow, okay. And Support Black College was a side project. Mm -hmm. So I just realized, though, that like, being there and having the type of access that we had, there was so much that I could have done more yeah. while I was in that space than mm -hmm. I actually did. And then it kept happening. So it was like, I knew about Facebook ads early, mm -hmm. didn't like go crazy in it. I knew about Instagram early. I knew about all of these things early, but I didn't take everything that I could from it. So now the way that I look at things, like when these new things arise, I jump into them immediately, mm -hmm. don't look at any outside opinion, and then I try to milk it for everything that it has because these opportunities will not last forever. TikTok won't be around probably in three, five, seven years. Yeah. So get everything that you can from it and then go on to the next because there inevitably will be one. Yeah, because we look at a lot of the influencers that were big, at least in the comedy space, they were big on Vine. Vine first. Before they came over. So they got good at creating content in that yeah. style. And then they so they were naturally good yeah. in Instagram, and then brought some of those people over exactly. to Instagram. You know, and then and then that like that's just a skill set that transfers. So now it's like, but then the thing too though is that that clout transfers too. So it's like yes. now look at all of the Vine creators too. You got like Cameron Dallas and like all these people. Mm -hmm. They're like huge pop stars now right. because they mastered that one skill and then took it everywhere yeah. else. Yeah, I like it. That, that's that's man. So, we're going AI. We're going AI. <laughs> um, I'm looking at my business, mm -hmm. right? What metrics are you looking at yourself, other than maybe like just money in my bank account, right. to track how well the company is doing? Or what metrics are you looking at? So, okay, this is working, that's not working. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, well, it's interesting because it's different for both businesses that we do, but like more than likely I'm looking at like cost per acquisition, show up rate, close rate, just specific KPIs in that way. Yeah. Um, um, and you look simple. at this yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. That's where you, you got to learn that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You got to. Because it's like, I mean, if you don't know it, if you don't know it, you can't grow it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, you got to really like know the know the ins and outs. Yeah. All right. Uh, you, you talked about inventory a little bit. Mm -hmm. But like, how do you, all right, I'm an entrepreneur. I have these dollars. Right. How do I say, okay, you know what? I'm putting this towards ads. Right. This towards new inventory. Mm -hmm. This towards the apps right. on my website. Yeah. Like, how do you now put that? That's good. So the way that I look at, um, <laughs> the way that I look at just like ads or anything to like grow marketing, mm -hmm. I think about it as like twenty percent of your revenue goal you should be putting into marketing. Okay. So that's why I always laugh when it's like, yeah. hey, I want to do seven figures in my brand. I was like, are you willing to invest two hundred thousand dollars into marketing to get to the seven figure number that you're looking for? So That's a good way to do I would it. say about 20% I'm looking to go into marketing. And then I'll be honest with you, bro, the newer businesses that I'm working with, I'm not buying really any inventory. So I'm using most of the capital that we have to just keep and then pour onto the business and marketing because like, I don't I have the luxury of doing that now. Nowadays, I can just drop a product without having it at all and then sell fifty hundred thousand dollars worth of it and then I can have a net 30 with my warehouse and now I don't necessarily have to pay that back until 30 days from now mm. so and then even for the newer person you might not have the net 30 but you can still build awareness for free on TikTok sell a product then make five thousand ten thousand dollars buy the product for two thousand and then keep that profit and then now you have some actual profit in the business yeah. how, how have you found because you probably have a better answer to this for me uh, what well, then I do? How do you communicate to customers? Yeah. Like, hey, you bought this, but it'll be to you in right. three, four weeks. Like, <laughs> you know, and because like, I've I've seen that before. Like sometimes we'll drop something early, and it's like, okay, but it's coming, and you get all these emails. How do you handle that? Yeah. So there's a few things you can do. There's apps that you can add to the store. I forget what it's called off the top now, but when someone adds something to cart, it'll pop up and say, hey, click this button to click yes that lets you know that this is gonna be here in two to four or six weeks. Okay. So that's one way. Got it. The, the answer to the question is as much communication as possible. Got it. Because then you can do your emails on the back end. Um, I like to like update customers as we're going to. Sometimes even new entrepreneurs, I'd be like, yo, if you're, the best thing that you can do is tell your story as you're building this brand with the customers so that they can relate to you. So, hey, we just did a pre-order. Yo, the samples just came in. Yo, this is looking really dope. Yo, mm -hmm. I just did the bulk order for everybody that bought. It just landed. Here's the package. It's like, and constant communication. Got it. 
Okay, I like that. Yeah. I'm gonna add that in too. Cause we, <laughs> you know, we haven't done like any pre drops in a while. Yeah, but like, yo, maybe maybe we'll, we'll look into doing that this uh, this this spring, bro. All of the biggest brands do it, bro, and mm -hmm. it's so crazy. Like, I got a few homies that are doing you know a mill a month and just straight clothes, and they are getting designs done by their designer. They're negotiating net thirty terms with their manufacturer. They're getting, they're dropping the clothes, making a million dollars in a drop, and then saying, hey, manufacturer, I'll pay you in 30 days. And then they're now, they have a bunch of money to do with whatever they want in the business. It's just as long as they put enough to the side to pay the manufacturer in 30 days, they're good. Yeah. Because the real issue in the clothing business is that the cash flow becomes an issue. But right. when you do things like that, which most people don't even know to do, you can actually like free up your cash flow a lot by just negotiating a net 30 with your manufacturer. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, I always have a segment in the show called Breakdown of Breakthroughs. Okay. Um, I always believe that, you know, every entrepreneur is going to have a breakdown. Mm. And the lessons that you pick up um, that allow you to break through is what helps you get to that next level. Okay. Um, have you had a breakdown? And if you did have a breakdown, you know, you can share whatever you want to share of it. Yeah. But what lessons did you learn through it from it that helped you break through to the next level? It's really just a story that we talked about earlier yeah. with the 30 employees yeah. not paying payroll. That yeah. was that was like the biggest breakdown I had. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I can try to dive more deep into it, but it was hard, bro. Yeah. Like, it's nothing, it's very difficult to like wake up or just, I didn't know what was going to happen the day after. That yeah. was the scariest part. It's like, I yeah. put all of this money into this business. I put all of the years of my life into this business. And now we're here, mm -hmm. a statistic that... 95% of businesses don't make it within the first five years. Yeah. And I'm honoring that right now. Yeah. So the the breakdown was that moment, but the breakthrough, and this is something I didn't share earlier, so I'll share it now, was I really realized was like, well, the one thing that I can do is just exhaust every option that I have. Because I didn't even finish the story earlier. Mm -hmm. We made it out. Yeah. So <laughs> the, yeah. way, the way that we made it out was like, I went to sleep that day and I was like, I have 24 hours to bring this business back to life. Mm -hmm. And I went out and was making phone calls and getting on, you know, uh, Zooms and trying to borrow money and doing all this different type of stuff. And then I ended up uh, getting someone to give me a loan for $100,000 in 24 hours. Wow. And then put 20% of that to the side, had to fire almost everybody. Wow. And and then from there, that's how we were able to just slowly grow our way back into into doing the business. So yeah, um, I think the big breakthrough for me there was that like even if you are at that lowest point, you have to exhaust all options. That's a big bar. Just exhaust every option, and yeah. then and then because my thing was this, it was like. I won't even feel right going to sleep the next day if I know I didn't try everything. Yeah. So I was like, let me just try everything, yeah. and then when I did, I, I found the money, mm -hmm. and. And I feel like if you think about the mentality of that, it's like for some people it's so easy to quit. Mm -hmm. But you got in so deep that it was so yeah. it was the opposite emotion <laughs> right. of how people feel about staying that you felt about quitting. That's right. like, yo, I have to do everything not to quit. Yeah. And and I feel like I feel like until you get to that moment in your business of like that feeling, it's gonna be very hard for you to win because there's so many things that make you want to quit. Mm-hmm. That you have to almost develop this rhino type skin to say, okay, all right, I just got to try everything possible. That's yeah. legal right. to make out of this. Thousand percent, saying? bro. Yeah. And then that's just, it's great because it's a character trait that goes with you into the next thing, too. And it's yeah. also a, because I think that like humans in general, they're motivated by inspiration or desperation. Yeah. But more than likely, we get very desperate and then we're like, how can I like make this work? Yeah. Whereas now, going through that situation, I'm like, very inspired to like become the person that manages money well and become the person that gets lines of credit when I don't need it and yeah. just does all of these things that necessarily would keep me away from that pain that I've been in before. So yeah. I think it's extremely necessary to go through. Yeah, I love it, man. Well, I appreciate you coming through, bro. I learned a lot myself. Oh, that's good. From, from this, this conversation. Anything about e-commerce that you want to share that maybe I didn't ask anything about that space that you want to share with people? Trying to get started. Yeah, I mean, um, I would say if you're getting started, that it's much more simple than you think it is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people try to overcomplicate it to, like, you know, get them to pay you and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, bro, it does not take a lot of money to make money in this business. Mm -hmm. It's all about the resourcefulness, not the resources. When I started, bro, I started with. I had a closet of designer shoes that my mom got me. <laughs> and it was East St. Laurent, Margiela's, whatever, and I just sold all of it because 
I didn't have the money to get started in a business. So if I let myself say that it takes money to make money, I wouldn't have any money today. Hmm. So I had to use the resourcefulness and not the resources, sold all of the shoes that I had, used the money that I had to get a domain, to mm -hmm. buy some product, yep. and then to start making content online and for free. And I think that anyone can get started in this business for with zero dollars, let alone if you got a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Even if I was starting it right now today, bro, go on Craigslist, look at all the things that are for free on Craigslist, list them on offer up for 20 bucks, 50, who cares? And then now you can create money from nothing and then now you have money. It's just about being resourceful. It is. So, yeah. I, don't know. I think it's resourcefulness and humility. Yeah. Because a lot of times the resourcefulness that you that it requires also requires humility. Like yeah. even calling to make those phone calls, for, yeah. that's, that's humility. Yeah. Selling the shoes that you're like, yo, that's humility. Mm -hmm. Some people, you might, you know, where does it come in? You might need to, you know, switch your car. You may need to go <laughs> from, you know, a, a, a Benz to a Toyota for right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? And like, I've had to do that times, many times in my life. And it's like, you know, at a certain point, you're like, All right, it's cool because it's easy to get that stuff back right. times 10. Yeah. But there is a level of humility that you're going to have to have yeah. at the beginning of your journey and throughout your journey, you know, to even like even the conversation with your employees say, listen, yeah. yeah. We don't have it, guys. Right. That's there's a level of humility yeah. that, that that's required. Bro, the biggest thing that I ever did, bro, was just get rid of my ego. Hmm. Like, I have nothing to gain, nothing to lose, and nothing to prove. And I honestly believe, I was talking about it earlier today, uh, there's a scripture in the Bible, uh, Timothy 6.18. Mm -hmm. Like, as long as you have clothing and food, then you should be fine with that. Something yep. along those lines. So for me personally, I, <laughs> I, I live by that. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't need... It doesn't even say shelter. It's like, yeah. as long as I have clothes and food, I'm cool. Mm -hmm. So as long as I have that, none of the outward things matter to me. Mm -hmm. And I, as long as I ha like can hold on to that, I have to let go of my ego too. And I read uh, this book uh, called Ego is the Enemy. Mm -hmm. I probably read it at least 20 times. Wow. And just such a good book, bro. Go check it out. Such a good book. And because as we talked about the skill sets that you need at each level of business, there's also a level of relinquishing of ego that you have to have at each level. Because mm -hmm. when you're in the beginning, you're like, I'm the best designer. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, well, no, like I need to let go of my ego because this person can probably do it better than me and do it at a faster rate. Yeah. Then what happens when you get to the CEO level and you realize I'm not the CEO of this business. Mm -hmm. I, this person has a bigger vision for it than me. That's another level of ego that you can relinquish. But if you don't gain the skill sets and relinquish the ego as you go, then you will inevitably get stuck in one of these positions. Yeah, that's tight. I was listening to uh, a podcast or somebody's interview. I can't remember. I'll be so many events. I don't even know. <laughs> but I think it was like the owner of Chick-fil-A. Mm. He was like, basically, and if it wasn't him, then whoever was, my bad. <laughs> he basically said, the business will always be in control by my family, but they may not always be the people that run it. Right. And I feel like that's a person that's understood that like, it's having the right people in the right places yeah. and it may not always be you right. it may not always be somebody that's close to you it may just be somebody else that is just right. really good at doing the job and last thing i'll say because i want to add on to that point because you brought it to my head is like i was watching an interview and i don't remember which ceo of chick-fil-a it was but he was saying that when he goes to networking events he'll just be like they're like what do you do oh, man i just sell chicken sandwiches so most people will hold on to the title of like i'm yeah. the ceo of mm -hmm. you know x y and z and i'm just like i don't even care I have nothing to prove to nobody. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I hold on to that when I yeah. do business. It works for you too, man. I think that's what, it, like your content, the way you say stuff and share stuff is like, yo, this dude's really just trying to help. Man, it's I not, appreciate that. Yeah, so it's, it, it's genuine, but it's also received that way, mm. which I think is important. That's good. Yeah. So. Thank you, bro. I just want y'all to know, you know what I'm saying? I've known him for a long time. The way <laughs> he is, in every place, he's he's been the same guy that I've seen from Thank the very you, beginning. Thank you. Um, and I think that's that's important. If, if anything else, it's like, yo, people can say, yo, I didn't switch up. <laughs> Core values, not necessarily, you know, he, there's things that have changed around. Right, you. right. But who he is is really good, man. So <laughs> I you. appreciate you. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, you man. Um, anytime somebody comes to the show, you know, that's only right, you know, you got, got a couple pieces of gear. Oh, yeah. Play a new ACO, you know what I'm saying? So Come on, man. Make sure we, uh, we I'm going to walk care out with some drip today. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Might as well. Might as well. <laughs> but, you, I mean, really, I would tell y'all, listen, new ACOs today wouldn't be what it is without the conversations I've had with Justin. So, um, just want to say thank you for coming oh, through. Man, Anytime somebody that. take time from their life to come through the studio. I appreciate that. Appreciate you. And oh, yeah. E.T.'s new book. Oh, you dope. You. Yeah, appreciate yeah. it, bro. Absolutely, thank you. Bro. I bet. I'm going to have to put a little fit together with this. Oh, 
That was some, some yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Yeah, tank top. Run the play. Yeah, sure. Good looking, brother. Yeah. Thank you, bro. I remember that conversation, bro. Yeah, no. I did too. I was like, yes. <laughs> okay. I have a different route. <laughs> 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 no, nah, but I appreciate you, man. Like I said, sharing um, and still doing the same thing today. Yeah. Just on a bigger level, man. So, Proud of brother, you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Um, where can people find you? I know you got yeah. education course. Yeah, yeah. So, um, social media, Justin P is my Instagram. Everything else is ecom Justin P. And, um, yeah, if you want to learn some stuff, I do a free training on Thursdays. So okay. if you want to learn how to get into e-commerce, go to www.lastecomtraining.com. And if not, perfectly fine. I hope you got some value from the show. Dope. Yeah. Well, listen, y'all. Y'all just got to play today from Justin, <laughs> from one of the top e-com experts that I know personally that's actually helped me as well. But listen, he gave you a whole bunch of plays. You just got to go run it. Nothing to play we'll with. No next delay. Episode. That's it. <laughs> What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official Run to Play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's Run to Play all across the world. Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day fixing your